friends and welcome back. Today we're chatting everything Christmas tree. I feel like we're bringing out our trees earlier and earlier every year, am I right? Every year I watch a Christmas story and there's that scene where they're getting their Christmas tree and it's like the night before Christmas and I'm like, is that is that even real? Do people used to get their Christmas tree just to have it for a few nights? Because flash forward 80 years and we'd be doing it a good like six to eight weeks early at minimum. Also, did you just gasp a little when I said 80 years ago? Because I know me too. I had to Google when a Christmas story was set and it said 1939. And I near like fell out of my chair when I read that. Anyways, I digress. It doesn't matter if you're decorating the day after Halloween or on Christmas Eve, 1939. These Christmas tree hacks are gonna help you out. Let's get started. All right, let's start right off the bat with getting your Christmas tree set up. Now, this year we have a fake tree. I've always been team real tree personally, but with a baby crawling around, it's just easier to keep a fake tree. I don't gotta worry about falling pine needles that she might attempt to like eat, because why do babies have to eat everything? I don't know. But one trick I do wanna show you is this super awesome DIY tree collar that's gonna cost you a fraction of the cost of those fancy ones that you see online, and bonus, it uses up some of those cardboard boxes I know you have lying around. You're gonna start by getting out your cardboard and you're going to create a box that's just big enough to fit your tree stand. So my tree is about 27 inches wide. So I'm creating four panels that are 27 inches wide. You can choose to do just a four-sided square. If you want a more rounded shape, you can opt to do like a hexagon or an octagon, whatever. You're just gonna glue this all together or tape it, whatever, it doesn't matter because you're gonna be covering it up. Just make sure to leave one corner not connected as this will make it easier to slide around the tree base. Now, once you're done, you're gonna cover this up and you can really get creative here to match your style. You can use contact paper or wood grain paper or metallic finished spray paint. You can use buffalo check pattern fabric or even holiday pattern paper. Really, you can do whatever you want. I chose to use some burlap, just covering the entire box and then that's it. You can literally slide this around your tree for a great DIY tree color that costs a fraction of the price. I love how this looks and I love that it cost me $10 instead of the other ones that are like 100 bucks online. What are you doing over there? What are you doing? You be in trouble? <laughs> Another hack is if you're getting a real trees to consider elevating your tree up off the ground. Often it's really hard to find real trees in the height that you want if you don't have a lot of space like horizontally. So you can actually opt for a slightly shorter tree that's not quite as wide and then rise it up like on a wooden crate which is what I used uh, here. Not only does this save a ton of room if you're short on space, but I actually really love doing this in the past because now you have more room underneath your tree for presents. I actually ended up lifting my current fake tree as well because I loved this idea. I just used some spare paint cans that I had underneath. I made sure it was super secure. I even used the hot glue to make sure that it was like definitely gonna stay in place. And then I used my DIY tree cover to cover it all up. I got a little extra height from my fake tree and I have more room for storing presents. All right, it's time to get lights onto our tree. So let's talk about this. Here are my best tips when it comes to adding lights to your tree. Tip one, you definitely want more lights than you think. Usual rule is about 100 lights for each foot of tree. And even if you have a fake tree that's pre-lit like mine, it doesn't hurt to add some more. Trust me, trees are a thousand times more magical when they have more lights. Just if you think you have enough lights, add more lights. That's that's the hack. One other trick I love is adding in some large bulbs too. The mix of the small and the large bulbs is going to make your tree way more twinkly and magical. Moving right along before you get to any ornaments, let's talk about garlands and ribbon. One of my favorite tricks for hanging garland is to use ornament hangers. This makes it way easier to hang your garland evenly and symmetrically as opposed to just like stringing it across the branches and being at the mercy of where the branches are. And if you opt for using ribbon, you may know it could be a little bit tricky to add ribbon as you're like wrestling a big spool of ribbon and trying to hang it all over the tree evenly and make it look like it's flowing really nice. It can often just look like you like wrapped it all around and it's not like weaving magically through the tree. You know, it's lacking the Christmas magic. So one trick that I recently discovered is to actually just use three foot lengths of ribbon instead of trying to wrestle the entire spool. You can take one end, push it into the tree, then push the center in and then tuck the other end away. Then you take your next three foot strip, you pick up where you left off 
and you continue this. And in my opinion, this looks way more like woven through the tree than just like if you wrapped the ribbon around. You can be a lot more intentional about it and I just think it looks so much prettier than the wrapping option of using the entire spool of ribbon. Okay, one more thing I love doing before I add in my ornaments is some holiday stem picks. I think this really adds some movement and dimension to the tree. It helps kind of like tie the tree together and can help you pull in a color theme if you use one. I got these ones for $3 from Target. They are the perfect size and I love how they look in the tree, especially if you're using a fake tree like me. The one thing that I really dislike about fake trees is I hate how like perfect they are. The perfect shape of a fake tree just feels even more fake to me. Do you know what I mean? And so I love how stem picks will add some movement and some like shape to your tree and just make it feel a lot more organic. Moving right along, once you've got your tree fully decorated, a final hack for anyone who might have small children or curious pets. One trick I'm doing this year that I love is my second baby is only about 10 months old right now, so she's too young to understand like, no, don't touch that. And I have seen some people use play pens around the tree to keep little hands away, and I think that definitely works, but I feel like it kind of takes away from the tree's splendor. So this year I just took a couple big boxes and I weighted them down with some heavy books, and then I wrapped them to look like presents. And I'm using these under my tree as sort of like a makeshift fence or barrier to keep my little one from constantly pulling on the tree, but with still making it look Christmassy. And of course with little hands, another tip is to always keep your unbreakable ornaments at the top and stick anything special up high and away from their grasps and then put the softer like unbreakable ornaments at the bottom and another idea I really love if is you have some ornaments that are just like super special maybe they're family heirlooms or just like really special ornaments to you is if you have a really little one for a year or two to consider putting those ornaments on a different tree you could do a tabletop tree like on your dining room table and put a few special ornaments on there. It's actually a really great way to showcase them and it keeps them safe from little hands while they're still growing and learning that no means no. Which, do they ever learn that? I don't know. Maybe once they move out, I guess. All right, guys, that does it. That is some of my favorite Christmas tree hacks. I actually really love using these on my tree this year. I think it's just these few little touches that can make your tree like seem so much more high end and like really almost like out of a magazine. It's just like a few little things that you can do to make it feel so much more magical. I hope that these helped you in your Christmas tree decorating again, whether you did it, doing it now? Are you doing it after Thanksgiving? Let me know in the comments down below. Are you doing it before Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving? I obviously have already decorated my tree before Thanksgiving, but I'm actually saving like our family ornaments to put on the weekend after Thanksgiving. So we can still have like a Christmas tree decorating moment at my house. As always, thank you so, so much for stopping by and watching. I hope you are having a fantastic day and I will see you all in my next video.